everybody. So I have a little surprise for everyone. Um, I found a little program. Hopefully you're starting to see me now. Um, I found a little program called StreamYard that allows me to use more than one camera at a time. So when we have so along with Jan, you can, um, I can move my camera back and forth. And also I can share my screen with you in the same one. So um, the one thing that'll be different though, is that the comments will come through as Facebook user. Um, so if you look at the top of the little screen that you're seeing, um, there is a little thing that says, I'm going live using StreamYard before leaving a comment please grant StreamYard permission to see your name. So if you want me to see your name through StreamYard, click that little link and tell it, Facebook, it's okay for me to see your name. It's only me seeing it. It's just in our group, just like we've always been, okay? So I like to be able to call people by name, but if you don't want to do that, that's okay. Um, you can also just leave me a comment and say, Hi, Jan from Judy. You know, you can just put your name on it like that. So all I see is, is everybody's names coming up as Facebook user. So I, that's all I can see until you tell Facebook it's okay for me to see your names. Okay. So I, um, I was able to add this cute little banner here. And um, then I can switch. I'm, right now I'm on my camera that's on my laptop in my microphone. And then I can switch over to my camera on my sewing machine. Oh, Connie, yay. Yay, can, can you see mine? Yes, Connie, I can. Thank you very much. So you, you click the little button. And so as soon as you tell Facebook it's okay to see, so that, then I'll be able to see your name come up when you say, hi, Jan, or whatever your question is, okay? So you do have to give permission to Facebook to do that. Um, cause I'm actually not even logged in to, can you see mine too? Not yet. Whoever said that? No, I can't. Um, I can see that a Facebook user said that to me. Can you see mine too? Let's see. I don't know if I can see on my other computer. I have another computer here. So if I put my computer up, um, oh, Marsha got it. Yay. I got Marsha. So yeah. So at in the little, right above where you're watching me on the video, there's a little blurb that says, you know, you can click on a link there and you can tell it, um, tell it that I, who you are. And then, then it'll bring me, bring me your names. If you don't want to do that, just, just type your name at the end. You know, if I know it's Jackie, like hi from Jackie, well, I know Jackie's here then. Okay. So this is something new I wanted to try. Um, it's, it's more like using Zoom. So I have some tools to make these presentations a little easier for me and hopefully more enjoyable for you. So <laughs> this is my surprise tonight. I am learning some new software. So um, I'm very excited. So I'm gonna turn off the banner. So give me just a second. I gotta turn off the little banner that says hello. And then I'm gonna go back to the comments, okay? And then I can, oh, you don't see that length, Jan? Um, afterwards, like after you see the, the video, you can maybe click on it then. You're seeing everybody's name. See, I can see everybody's name on my tablet. So I'm going to turn my head here in a minute. And so then I'll be able to see everybody's name, just not through um, my stream yard that I'm using. Okay. I'll be able to in a minute when I turn my head towards my tablet. All right. Cool. So is everybody hearing me okay too? And the video is all right. Everybody's seeing and the video looks good and everything. This is, this was, I was a little, you know, this is a little scary to do this tonight. So, so for me, oh, okay. Okay. And um, yeah, people are, I've got a couple of extra people in here helping me tonight so that I know if it's working. The volume and the video are good. Great. Great. Okay, so this is my surprise. I am I'm trying a new little new program to help me make these more fun for you and me, and then I can give I can work with more cameras and stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and oh, you did, Teresa. Yes, you did. You got you got the the little um, the little thing on Facebook so I can see your name. Yes, Teresa, why you got it? 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the cameras now. So give me just a second. I can switch my camera and my microphone to the other camera. And then we'll start our project. We're going to finish our, our purse tonight. I'm very excited about it. So just a second here. I have to go in and find my normal camera here and then change the microphone. Okay, so I think you should be hearing me still, hopefully. Now, when I, like I said, when I turn my head, I'm turning my head towards my tablet now, I can see your names there because that is on Facebook, okay? So if you don't wanna give me permission, that's fine. You don't need to. Um, but you might be able to do it also after the video ends. And if you go back and look at it, there will be a little, um, there's a little uh, comment at the top of the video. When, if you go back and look at it, um, you'll be able to then um, give that permission later if you want to. Okay. So is everybody hearing me okay now? I just switched my camera. Okay. And you should be able to see my sewing machine now. Okay. So I, I, um, Hopefully you'll be able to see me okay. I have the camera on the other side. Oh, how to give permission again. Let's see who asked that. Oh, um, Denise, it's, at the, it's, it's above the video. And if you, depending on how you're watching the video, you may have to wait till afterwards. But in the meantime, I can see your names because I have my tablet on Facebook. Okay. So I can see your names right now. So don't worry if you want to just... Um, you can do the permission after the after the class. Okay. All right. So Pat Berger, yes, you did. Excellent job. Pat got hers too. So so this is something different, but they have a new rule with Facebook StreamYard does that you have to give um, them permission now to see your names. And it's just me in our group, just like it always has been. Um, but there's another part, this third party little program is in there and they have to have permission. So I want to ask your permission to see your names. I can see them on my tablet. So I'm kind of looking at my tablet right now. Okay. So what we need to do first is we need to um, add the straps to our purse that we did. So here's my purse and I did add one of the straps. Let me pull this camera back just a little. Okay. I am going to pull this a little closer to me so I can see. Okay, so I um, did put the straps on the one side of the purse, and I'm going to show you how I did this. I made my straps. So the first thing we're going to actually do is make a strap so you know how I did it. And I noticed that some of you have finished your purses already. Excellent job, everybody. Um, and you we're able to find some some handles so that is also great um and so i am going to show you how i made my strap so i cut my straps the same size as we did for the um 50s purse and so they were like 22 and a half by like two and a half or something like that um and then what i did is I just took and put a piece of the shape flex on the inside. So let me get this down just a little bit more so you can see. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm using the camera on the opposite side, so I didn't have to move it tonight, and it makes it a little harder for me. Um, so I put shape flex on the back, okay? And then what I did is along each edge, I turned down about three-eighths of an inch, okay, and pressed it nicely with my iron. And I also folded it in half this way so that there was a little bit of a crease here. So that really helped a lot. And then what I did is I went ahead and folded everything in. So I usually fold the ends in first and then fold the sides. That seems to work better for me. With whatever works better for you. Okay, that, that works better for me, but that doesn't always, you could do it the other way around. And I just folded this in half then. And we did this with the 50s purse, so you all saw this, okay? And then I just put my little clips all the way down to the other end, okay? So what then I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to 
just do a little top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around the strap. So we'll do that first. I have white, my white polyester Mettler thread in the needle in the bobbin. And I have my needle in the center position. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. And I like to start at one, I want to start and go down the side that's open first to make sure that it gets, it gets closed quickly. Okay, Just making sure that my tablet's up so that I can see. So I'm going to start actually on the end like this. And I'm going to use that little mark. Remember, we've talked about that little mark on the J foot. Sorry, my J foot on here. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera again. Remember that little mark that there's one here and there's one in the center. And I like to lay the edge of my fabric along the one right over here on the right so that I use that to help me with my eighth inch um, top stitch. I am not a very good top stitcher, so I need every help that I can get. All right, so we'll, whoops. Got my thread stuck in the foot. There we go. All right, so we're going to go back down here then. And I want to start on the end. So I'm going to start here on the end, and I'm going to go over to towards the edge that's open because I want to get that one closed first so nothing slides around on me. And I'm going to get my eighth inch there, and I'm going to drop my needle, and I'm going to tie a little knot. Now, this is a hard place to start on any sewing machine. Now these machines have something called automatic height adjustment and that means it automatically adjusts the presser foot pressure and it really helps when you're trying to get started on a bumpy fabric like this, like a real thick fabric. So but you still sometimes have to give it just a little bit of a push to get it started. Okay, so let's see how we do here. Normally I do pretty well. Like this one I didn't have to do anything. It just went. So I'm going to stop at the end about an eighth of an inch away. I've got my pivot feature on too. See how the foot went up? Get just a little bit lower and tip the camera up just a little bit. This is a different angle, so I'm not used to this angle tonight. Okay, then I'm going to start going down this side. So I am going to slow, sew fairly slowly, and this is where I sometimes have to give it just a little bit of a push to get it started. I want to make sure that my edges stay nice and even. And I'm just top stitching around this handle. I was so glad that some of you were able to find um, those leather handles. They're beautiful. Some of, some of you put them on like with rivets. That worked great. And so you're really unlimited with how you do these. Now, I just wasn't able to really find any handles local, and I didn't have time to order them. So I, that's why I made mine. So you can do whatever works best for you. Most of the stores just don't seem to be holding or carrying handles anymore. I don't know why. They, for a while there, the you know purse handles were like everywhere, and now I can't find any. So, all right. So we're gonna keep going. I'm going about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So is everybody seeing the? The machine okay i think you can see it pretty well looks good on my screen i i've been researching these little programs for a while trying to find one that i didn't have to pay very much or anything for and believe it or not this program is free i can't stream more than 20 hours a month but that's a lot less than i normally do anyway so we're going to give it a whirl. But we, if you notice at the top right hand corner of our screen, we have a new friend. We have the little duck. The StreamYard logo is the little duck. And when you are on a free version, you'll have the little duck up there. So you can all say hi to the little duck. He'll be visiting us when we have our live presentations. Oops, looks like I overshot my corner. So I have to take a stitch back. Okay. So then I went over the end again, and now I'm going to turn down and go down the side that's just folded. And again, sometimes I have to give it a little help to get started, but that one started really well. That automatic height adjustment on the machine is something that I really notice if um, I don't have it. So the first machine that had that was years ago, the 4000D. 
And so I've had it for a very long time now. And um, I really notice it when I sew on a machine that doesn't have it, when you're going over these thicknesses like this because it kind of stalls. You know how the old machines used to kind of stall when you got to a thick spot? And this machine does not do that. All right, so I'm just about down to the other end here. All right, so we're going to stop there, and I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to cut. And there we go. So I think we're done with this strap. So you can see I've, I've, I've stitched all the way around. It's nice and and sturdy now okay and i'm going to give me a second here we're going to trim off that end and i think i have a couple ends on this end all right so there's the second strap so now i'm going to show you okay so in the instruction booklet it told you to put the straps on um after you put the clasp in well i really don't want to have to maneuver around those that clasp so i put my straps on first and then i put the clasp in at the end so that's how i'm doing this for one reason i wanted to sew my straps on so i don't like to have to hand sew anything so i wanted to be able to sew my straps on with the sewing machine so that is the next step here. So I'm going to grab my purse. And now I put one, oops, one strap on here already. Pull this back a little bit. So this side, I already put my strap on, okay? And then I'm going to show you how I did that by going on the other side. So what I did is I folded my purse in half. Let me pull this back so I can turn the camera. Like I said, this is a little different angle for me, so I'm having a little trouble tonight. I folded my purse in half, you know, I just kind of took it like this and folded it and I found the center of each side and then I marked it with a pin. All right, so I have it marked here with my pin. And then I want to, on the pattern piece, I marked this and I'm not sure that it really um, showed it on the actual pattern, but what I found is I wanted my handle to go down about an inch and a half from the from the top edge and i wanted it to be each side so like this inside was going to be two and a half inches from the center all right so we're going to mark two and a half inches from the center with a pin so i've got my center mark here and i'm going to mark over two and a half inches i've got my little hem gauge here and we're just going to mark two and a half inches with a pin and that's going to be the inside of the strap so get that one and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so let me tip this down just a little bit again okay and then two and a half inches on this side of center like that okay so that's where the insides of my straps are going to be and then I want to mark with also with a pin down an inch and a half because I want the bottom of the strap to be an inch and a half from the top edge. So I'm just going to take another pin and I'm marking down an inch and a half with another pin. So that way I know that I've got them. Oops, let's see if you can see this side. Turn the camera a little bit. and like that all right so inch and a half whoops i think i got a little off on that one may have to change that pin there we go i have a camera in between me now so like what i'm hoping to do is get another camera so that i can have one permanently affixed on the right side of my machine and then the other one will be if i need another table <laughs> so I don't have to have one in front of me all the time because this one is it's the wrong angle when I'm working with stuff so okay so there are the pins and now I'm going to take my strap and I find that I usually put the open edge on the inside that just seems to be the way I normally 
Yeah, I kind of like this blue fabric too, Denise. It it's um it this was an outdoor fabric that I found at Joanne's. I thought it was nice and it and I just made all of mine out of that same fabric because I I just bought enough to make several purses. So okay. So I've got the inside, you know, that that spot that's open here. I want to put that on the inside. So I'm going to put Here's my mark that was two and a half inches from the center and I'm going to put the bottom at the one and a half inch mark and I'm going to hold that on there and I've got some other pins um my my little magic pins are a little bit soft for this heavy fabric so I had to come up with some <laughs> stiffer pins to put this in so I can't get the pins to stay in to hold this strap on okay then we're gonna whip second here gotta get the other one we're gonna put a pin up at the top here so we put a couple pins in just to hold this strap in place for us like that and then i'm going to remove these other ones and get these out of our way once i'm happy that it's in the right place okay and then when you're putting the strap on let me pull this back so you can see the whole top of the purse when you put this on, make sure that you don't get the strap twisted because I've done that before. So the inside here is that open edge, okay? Yeah, the, okay, the, the two and a half inches is actually the outside edge of the handle, yes. The outside edge of the handle is what I did. And I'll show you the other one, the other side so that we know that they're even, okay? Somebody asked if that was the outside edge of the handle, and it is. I put the outside edge of the handle on the two and a half inch mark. Okay, so let's see if I put it, I think I got it right. Yep, it looks like it's right. Nope, I don't think I did. I think I messed it up, guys. I want the inside of the handle at the two and a half inch mark. See, I messed it up. So let's go back and we'll, we'll remeasure this side. Sorry, I think I messed it up. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get this right yet. Okay, put the two and a half inch mark on here again. This is this kind of stuff that I have trouble with. I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, so let me mark, let's, let's go and look at the other side to make sure I remember how I did it. Okay, and then we're gonna go down an inch and a half. Okay. So I'll go to the other side and I'll measure it and we'll, we'll see how I did it. Okay, so let's turn it around. All right, so this side, okay. So here's the center and see that the inside of the handle is gonna be the two and a half inch mark, the inside, not the outside, the inside, right here. So they're gonna, it's gonna set mostly, the, the two and a half inch marks here and then that's gonna set out. So that's how I did it. Yep, okay. So I had done it wrong, so we'll try it. We'll start over and we'll do it again. Okay. Good thing I have you guys to keep me in check here. Okay. So again, I want this to be. So there's a full five inches inside the handles. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put the inside of the handle against that two and a half inch mark. There we go. Gonna find those special pin, heavier pins again. All right, so we'll put this in like that. I think maybe we got it now. So sorry about that. It's kind of one of those things that you know, do as I say, not as I do. Because I've gotten all the rest of them right. I don't know why I couldn't get this one on right. There we go. All right, and I got it down to the one and a half inch mark. Got to find another one of those pins. Put this one in. It's probably because I have a camera between my hands. Okay, it's distracting. All right. So then we have the full two and a half inches from here to the inside of this handle. All right, so now we can try the other side. Make sure you don't get it twisted. And I'm going to put the inside of the handle against that two and a half inch mark. So there's a full, full five inches in between. 
All right, find some more of those pins. I got a couple more over here. Jan, I think I make more mistakes than anybody combined. I've made so many mistakes doing things. It's amazing. That's how you learn, though, you know. You got to make mistakes to learn. Okay. And then put another one. Oh, there's another one. So does everybody understand where the, the straps went? <laughs> Hopefully I didn't totally confuse everybody. Okay, and then we'll put this one in. <laughs> it must be the name Jan, Jan. <laughs> I've made so many mistakes with an inverter machine. It's like, that's how I've learned, though. You really have to learn that way. Okay, so now let's look and see if we got them kind of even. If we look at both sides of our purse, does it look like it's even? I think it looks pretty good, doesn't it? So if you look at this side and you look at this side, doesn't it look pretty even? I think it does. So I think we're good. Okay. Looks pretty good. So if I, if I look at it from both sides, they look pretty even. <laughs> if they're a little bit off, it's not going to make that much difference. Okay. So let me get this pattern out of the way. And then what I did, since I didn't want to have to hand sew these, I'm going to tip this down now. Since I didn't want to have to hand sew these, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way so I won't knock it all over. I wanted to be able to, to, to sew this in with the sewing machine. So I'm going to stuff the inside of this into the purse a little bit so I can just sew through the, the lining and the outside of the purse. And I can do this without taking my, um, and I am also going to, let me, let me just do this real quick. I'm going to pin these straps down and just out of my way so I don't get them stuck in anything. You know, when you get one side done, you kind of have to take the other side and kind of pin it down out of the way. So I don't get, because you know me, I would get then the second strap tied in with the first one. Oops. Having trouble stabbing it. I'll probably stab me instead of the purse. Just want to get these anchored down so that they won't... See if I got another one of those heavier pins in here. I think I do. Maybe not. Usually I can get these done, this this part done with the little pins, but there we go. Okay. So just get that out of our way. So then what I can do is I stuffed all the inside down in here. Let me pull this back a little bit again. Stuff this down in here and get it out of the way. And then I'm going to lay this under the foot. And I want to start... I'm going to start across to the top up here and then come down this side and across and back up. And I'm actually going to sew over this top part a couple of times just to give it extra strength. So I'm actually going to start by laying the person here like this and I'm going to slide this under my foot and I'm going to start this direction like I'm going to sew across the top, okay? And I'm going to try to stay roughly where my my top stitch was. So I'm going to do the best I can and kind of start on my top stitch on that side because I've top stitched this. So that's going to give me kind of a line to go by. So I'm going to go across this. OK, and then I'm going to turn the purse. This way. Now you might be able, not be able to see as well with the camera because no matter what I do, the purse is going to be a little bit in the way right now. And I'm going to make sure this is laying flat. And then I'm going to go down that line that I made. You know, the other the other top stitch that I did before. I'm going to try to stay right on it. And give me this second. I'm going to stick my glasses on so I can see just a little better. And then I'm going to turn the purse again. Make sure that I don't get anything stuck in there. And I'm going to go along that line. Along the bottom. Just try to stay as close up to your original top stitch as you can. Okay. And then I'm going to go turn it again. And 
go up this side. You want to be careful of those pins because these are the little thicker ones. So you want to be very careful with the pins. Okay. Okay. And then, whoops, I need one more stitch, I think. There we go. And then I'm going to turn it one last time and I'm going to go over it the top again because I want this part to be a little stronger because that's the top of the strap and it'll be taking some pressure. Then I'm going to back up over it. So I've sewn over that several times, that top section. And I'm going to go back down over this one and tie a knot. And then my strap is on. So it's not too bad to put the straps on. Yeah, somebody said they, they did an X in the middle. Jan, you did it. I saw an X in the middle. Yep, you can do that too. It was just easier for me to go around this way. I had a hard time with the X. I was trying to, and I couldn't get things turned the way I wanted it. So I was not being very successful. I tried that and ripped it out. So I've been doing, I did them this way instead. So, okay. So let's try doing this one again. We're going to start over here. Whoops. Slide it under the foot. We'll do this other one, so hopefully you can see me. Okay. Actually, I think I'm going to start this way on this one just because of my pin. We'll still sew over that again, but I'm going to have to start this side for this one just because my pin's in kind of a bad place, so, and I don't want to take it out. All right, so I'm going to tie a knot. We'll start on this side for this one. Okay, and then I'm going to go down on top of my top stitch line down to the bottom of the strap where this top stitch ends. I need one more stitch. There we go. Then I'm going to turn my purse. Make sure nothing else is under there. And I like having that pivot on because it really helps because then I can turn and I don't have to lift a bunch of buttons or push a bunch of buttons to lift all the foot and everything. Okay, so I'm going to slide this around. Okay, Make sure nothing's under there. And then go up this side, whoops. Whoops, I must have hit the presser lever with the purse. There we go. Okay, we're going to go up this side. Oops, come on. What does it say? Oh, must have hit the presser lever again, just a second. Sorry, the purse is kind of bulky back there, so it keeps hitting the presser lever and then it thinks the foot's not uh, down. There we go. Then I'm going to flip it this way. And then I'm right up where that, that top stitch was right here. Okay. And I'm going to go across here to the other side. And then I'm going to hit the reverse button. Reverse back over it, and then I'm going to go forward again. So that just gave that extra strength at the top. And then I'm going to tie a knot. Oh, yeah, Denise, my, my dad's doing okay. Okay, so then we have the straps sewn on. So let's get rid of some of these little ties here. They look pretty good. This is this to me was one of the hardest parts. This in the pocket. I don't know why I had such a time with that pocket, but I did. Okay. So then I'm going to go in here and I'm probably going to have some little some little ends to, to cut off here. Okay. There we go. So then with this all with all the handles on, when let's so take the pins out of this one. Second here, and I'll pull the camera back a little bit. Push this down, and there's the handles. We did it. Look there. So the handles on that side, and they look pretty. They look pretty even, don't they? Let me pull this camera back so you can see the whole top. There we go. They look pretty even, and then there's the handles on that side. So that is the completed purse with with the. Um, made handles, you know, the the, the, the handles made out of the same fabric. Okay. Now the other thing in the instruction booklet, and I want to, I'm going to go ahead and switch the, um, I'm going to flip the camera over here. Actually, I'll do that in a second. I'm going to do this first, but down here in this purse along here, it said to do a 
ladder stitch. And this little area here that is attached to the side seam that runs over to where the clasp is going to go in up here needs to be ladder stitched shut. And what a ladder stitch is, um, I'll, I'm going to show you on another piece of fabric because this is so small. I didn't think you'd be able to see what I was doing. So I, I'm just going to show you on another piece of fabric so that you can actually see what a ladder stitch looks like. And I'll tip this down. Now I can take my glasses off. And I'll show you on a piece of fabric what a ladder stitch is. So here's whoops. Sometimes it makes my, must have hit my hand in front of it and see if it clears up for me. Is it going to, there we go. Um, sometimes the autofocus takes a second. All right, so when you do a ladder stitch, I learned this when I, with doll making because we use this for like soft sculpture dolls and it works really, really slick. So what, a, what I'm going to do when I have a ladder stitch, let's say that I want this fabric to be, well, I'm going to just fold it up, like pretend that's the seam that we had that we needed to, you know, ladder stitch. Okay. That little section in there. And what I usually do to start my ladder stitch is I like to do a knot. So I'm just going to start it here as an example. Like this. And then I would like to, I, I, I start a loop and then I like to twirl my my needle through there twice and make a really strong knot okay and then here's the two sides like the two sides of the inside of our purse so when you do a ladder stitch what you're doing is you're kind of going up each side at at um straight up instead of having your doing a whip stitch this way you're doing one stitch on each side. So I'm going to start over here and you're just going to make a little short stitch. I think I might have to put my glasses back on. You're just going to make a little short stitch. And then you're going to make a little short stitch directly across from it. Like that. So see, then you have like a little ladder step in there. And you want them to stay as, as um, horizontal as possible. Okay. And like the, the, the stitches need to be as close to being right across from each other as possible. And then you're going to take another stitch on the other side. And then go back to the opposite side. And I and some people may not have ever seen this. It, this is a stitch that, like I said, we use this in doll making when we were making self sculpture dolls to make different... Um, and then what you can do, it's like a zipper. You can pull it like this, and it makes it really strong. So it's like a zipper then. So then I'm going to go back over here, and, and you, but you're taking your stitches forward instead of like a whip stitch, okay? Because a whip stitch is not going to be as strong. And I'm just going to go back and forth. Can you see how I'm kind of going back and forth from one side to the other? Sure, I don't have a bunch of knots in there. Okay. And then I just kind of leave them open like that. And then when you get a few stitches in there, you pull. And then it makes it makes it like a zipper and it just zips it up like that. See how that just kind of zips up like that? And then it, then it holds it really strongly. So that so it's it's a real strong stitch. And then when I'm done. You know, that was just that little piece that we had to do. And then when I'm done, I do the same thing. I take a whip stitch through, make a loop, put my needle through there like this two times. I put it through the loop two times and I make a really strong knot at the end. So that's what I did in those little spots in the purse. Just because you needed to give the, um, so there's my other knot on that end and then I would trim it off. Okay, so like in the purse here, then this little area right here, hopefully you can see that I did that with that. You can hardly see the stitches because when you when you pull it like a zipper, it just kind of buries the stitches and you don't really see them. But you need to have this strong right here to, to hold that heavy clasp. Okay, 
because we're going to put that heavy clasp in there and I did both sides. So that's what she's talking about in that one instruction. Okay. So I did that on both sides. All right. So does everybody, does anybody have questions about the actual construction of the purse? I think everybody, I've seen a few people get their purses done and now we're going to work on the clasp. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around here and we're going to work on the clasp and I'll bring my computer over also. But is, are there any questions on the, the actual construction of the purse then? Okay, just a second here. i got to get some of these little things off so I won't knock them over. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera around here. Hopefully, you might see the ceiling, sorry. I'm going to bring it down this way. And then I'm going to move my computer over a little bit so that I can see if I'm angled right so you can see. Okay. Because I need my other table here to do this. So um, I did start one of my purses. So I have an extra purse. And what I'll do is the purse that we just did, um, I can only do half of the class tonight because I don't want to um, fiddle with it when it's wet. And I think we talked about this in the other class purses that we've done. So I normally make three purses so that I can actually finish a whole purse. So this one here over here, I'll turn the camera. This one I did half of the, the, the class this afternoon. This class actually goes in a lot easier than the 50s purse did. Because the 50s purse class, when they're when they're square, you have to kind of make the shape of the purse with the outside corners. And when they're curved like this, it's so much easier to put the clasp in. So I actually, I was really afraid to put this huge clasp in. <laughs> and so when I started working with it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually a lot easier than I thought. So the first thing we need to do is I am going to get rid of these. I'm going to pin these straps down and get these straps out of the way so that we don't have to worry about them getting in our way. So I'm just going to take some pins and we'll pin them out of the way. Is everybody doing okay so far? Everybody's still hearing me, I hope. Looks like you are because I, I can see myself on, on YouTube, but I can't hear anything because I've got the sound turned off. I got a I got a little a little thumbs up, so it must be good. Awesome. And do, does the video look better? Does the video look clearer to you too? It's it it seems like it is to me. I might have better control over the quality of the video this way too. All right, so I'm just gonna pin these down. Find another pin here. There we go. I thought it looks really good, Jan. I was very happy with it. Okay. So then I need to also get this part of the purse out of the way. And I'm going to turn this down. I'm just going to turn the outside tote part down and get it out of the way. Just be careful. Don't stab yourself with the pins. Okay. Because we want to be able to get to the top of the purse. So it's sort of like having a great big um coin purse in the center of it okay so just think of it as a great big coin purse and then what i need to do is i need to mark the center of this because if you don't use the center um a center mark it's going to be really hard to get this lined up so that it looks nice on both sides so what i did is i took my purse then so i get this turned down get it out of my way here i took this and you know, marked my got my sides even here. And then I made I found the center of each side of the coin purse part. And they call it the coin purse. So I'm just gonna work up this. And then I'm going to put a little pin in there so that I can know where the center is on each side. So we'll do this on each side. And I'm gonna be kind of working from the inside. So I'm going to mark the inside. So again, I'm going to go back here and just kind of 
find the center and then I'm going to work myself up this side. Okay. And then we'll put a pin over here and then we're going to mark this with a marking pencil. And that white marking pencil, I'm going to use it again because this is navy blue. So depending on what color, like this one that I did earlier is white. So I made this one with a, you know, a blue, like the purple marker here because it's white. But this one is navy. So I'm going to use my white marking pencil. And I ordered these for the store and they're up on the website now, but I found the ones that have the white the pink and the black all in one pencil so you don't have to buy three different pencils and it was like a dollar more than the single ones so i thought that was really neat and those are up on the website too as well as the little um as well as the little refills so those are up there too so i'm gonna go ahead and mark the centers on the inside so hopefully these i can see these i may have to put my i always have to put my glasses on when i'm doing these all right, so we're going to mark these so that I can at least see where the pin is. My pin was kind of crooked, but okay, so I'm going to mark that because I want to know where the center of my um, clasp needs to go. Okay, and we'll do this one too. I don't have, I might have to leave the pin in this one because I've got a bunch of white there. So if I leave it in this way, I think I can see it. There's a lot of white and I can't really see my white mark very well. So right, right where I need it. This one's better. <laughs> this side's better. So might go ahead and just stick the pin in there from the bottom and then I can take it out. So I have that marked a little bit better. Okay. So I usually just take take a marking pen, but my part marking pen is not working terribly well on this fabric because there's a lot of different colors on it. Okay. So I have the mark, so I know where the center is. So let's set this back a minute and let's look at the, oops, second here, the clasp. So the clasp you need for this purse is called, it's the ZW6080. I do have more of these in stock because I had run out and I've got more in stock and it's the one with these great big baubles on it, okay? And it's up on the website as well. If I can get it open, there we go. Boy, this one's really together good. It's have tape on it. In a second here, I can't get it apart. Oh, every now and then I get one of these that the bag breaks, so I must have stuck some tape on it. Okay, here we go. So here's my, my bobble clasp. And then you also get the paper tape, the paper twine in there. Now these are really big. And this paper twine works fine. This is the piece they give you, but it is very small. Okay, it's very thin. And honestly, I like it to be a little bit bigger for these big ones, okay? And the other thing that's nice about this clasp is see the little ball in the center right here? That's the center of your clasp. So it's helpful to then you know where, where you need to center your line that we just made. That's where we're gonna center it is on that little, that little bauble, that little ball right there, okay? And what works better for me is working on the back side first. And I want the back side of my purse to be the pot, the purse, the side that the pocket's on. So that's going to be my the back of my purse. So I'm going to turn this so that here's the pocket in here. Okay. And I'm going to be kind of working from the inside. So I'm going to take this other half, you know, the, the front of it, and I'm going to kind of pull it down. And then we'll clip it down with a couple of these little clover clips and get it out of the way. So it won't pop up on us and get in the glue. Because ask me how I know about that. I'm always getting glue all over everything. Okay. So there's the center. This is the back. And I want this piece that has the little ball on it to be on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test fit this first just to see that I've got it kind of centered. So I'm going to lay this up there. Okay, and we're just going to slip it on to the clasp. There's no glue yet. See how we did. 
this one's so much easier than the other one. I really struggled with the 50s purse. That one got thrown across the room a couple times. This one just went right on. Okay, that looks pretty good. So get that. So see that. So here's the little ball in the center. Whoops, I need to flip my camera up just a little bit. So here's the little ball in the center right here. Okay, and then I laid it into the purse. So you kind of know where you're going. I like to kind of test fit them before I put glue on. So I kind of know how I'm going here. Okay. And I want that little ball to be like right where my mark was like that. Okay. So that looks pretty good. So what I did, instead of using the twine that comes with it, and if that's all you have, this works fine, but it is slightly um, thinner than I would like it to be. I have some, um, this uh, cording and, and it is satin cording. And it's not really the right stuff, but it works really well. It's that Hildy and Joe that you can get at Joann's. And I just cut pieces that match the size of my clasp. Okay, so this is a little bit thicker and it just fills some more of that space up because there's an awful lot of space in here. You can see that, that this is a pretty big clasp. All right, and I wanted to make sure that the purse would stay up in there really well. So I'm going to use this thicker stuff um, instead. And I just got this at Joann's. It's black. And I've been using this on the big purses because some of the paper tape that I've been, or the paper twine that I've been getting is kind of small. So um, I'm just going to keep this though because I might need it later for something else. Okay. So now we're ready for a little glue here. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this sitting up here and I'm going to put the glue into the side of the clasp, the, 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 the side with the little ball on it. I'm going to put the glue in there. And the glue I'm using is Aileen's Fabric Fusion, and that's also on the, on the website. Now, with this particular clasp, with it being as big as it is, you are going to have to be relatively, you're going to have to be pretty liberal with the glue, because this is a big clasp. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting the glue. Whoops, I can hear. Got a big blob on the end here. And I'm going to put the glue in there. And you do need a fair amount of glue in this clasp because it has got a deep, you know, a deep crevice in it. And you want to make sure that it's well glued. So I'm putting a nice strong bead in there. And if you get a little bit on the clasp, it'll be okay, but try to keep it off the fabric. That's always easier said than done, isn't it? So I'm putting this in. I have kind of an empty spot up here. Whoops. This is kind of thick. This one's getting kind of dry, I guess. Okay. That looks pretty good. So I got a nice strong bead of glue in there. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down onto my the back of my purse here. And I'm going to leave it standing up for right now because this seemed to be the way it worked best for me. And I'm going to try to get this even. And then we'll just lay this down and try to get it lined up here. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just lining it up. Slip it in and into the little crevice. Kind of have to do the sides and then work your way down. There we go. I'm going to have to take that pin out in a second. I just want to make sure I get it kind of even first. Okay. This is a very large clasp, so, and it's heavy. Oops. Got this one crooked. There we go. Okay. So get it even, and I can see that I've got it even on the sides, right? And I pushed up in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my twine, or in this case, it's my silk rib, my silk um, cording. And I'm going to take my pin out, make sure that's even, and take that pin out. And with this one, since it's so big, I found that it worked better for me to, to fold it in half, and then take it in the center and I'm just going to take my thumb and push it up in there 
all the way around. See, I'm just sliding it in. And then we'll lay this down in a minute. Now I'm a little long on this end. So I can take my scissors and just clip a little end off. And I'm just sliding it into the clasp. And I started in the center and I've, I'm holding it. And I'm just going around this way. Okay. And I've got a paper towel over here. So, and then see, I'm a little long in the end, So I'll, I'll give it a little clip here. You don't want it to stick out from the bottom. All right. And slide it in all the way around. Okay. And make sure that I'm still in the class, but looks like I am. And then I'm going to carefully lay this down. And I may have to readjust the camera. So I'm going to lay this down. Okay. I may have to adjust the camera here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to push that cording up into the clasp. But I already had it started in there with my thumbnail. So I'm just going to give it a good push so that it goes up in there nicely. So this clasp was big and the purse was strong enough that it kind of held it up, you know, so I could start working with it right side up. And it was actually easier, I thought, than laying it down the whole time. The little ones I have to lay down. Okay, so I'm just working my way around and pushing that cording up in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Make sure I get this side. So I'm going to turn this. You just have to be a little careful because this is wet. And I don't know if I can get you so you can see this. I have to be able to see it. So it may have to. I'm just doing the same thing on this side, making sure that it's completely sat up in there. Okay, looks pretty good. Okay. Pull the camera back a little bit. I'm going to open this up just a little, see if the sides look good. Okay, it looks like I missed a little spot up here. So I've got two sizes of screwdrivers here. So sometimes I need my littler one to do the finishing because sometimes I can't quite get the bigger one up in there. So I had a couple little spots that came loose a little bit. So I'm going to work at this just a little bit more. like this so i think we're pretty good it feels like that the cording is up in there and the two sides look well seated okay looks pretty good okay so i think we're good so now what i want to do is i'm going to take my little pliers and you can do this um two different ways i I have a pair of, just making sure I'm all the way up in there. Let me take a look at the back of it eat quickly. It looks pretty good. All right. So I have this cool pair of pliers that I got at Hobby Lobby in where they have the stained glass. And they have see these rubber tips on them. And they're flat, like kind of like wide bills on them. And I don't have to put anything over my clasp to keep from marring it. But if you're using regular plies, pliers, which work fine, make sure you put some batting, a couple layers of batting over the pliers and over your, your clasp so you don't mar and put marks in your clasp. But these work really well. So then what I want to do is on these down here by the clasp area, I'm just going to feel again to make sure that my cording is well seated feels like it is. Yep, it's black, so it's hard to see. And I'm just going to take my pliers. Let me see if I can pull this back just a little. And I'm going to crimp. This is a big clasp, so it's a little harder to bend. So I have the, the, the pliers laying on the table, and I'm going to crimp in that corner. And I'm gonna, actually going to crimp this one up one more so I have like two full, two full um, widths of the plier that I crimped on that corner. 
And then I'm going to carefully flip it around this way. And I'm going to do this side. Same way. Okay, so I'm going to. So it helps if you put it down on the table and push down on the pliers. But these were, I don't know, these weren't that expensive at Hobby Lobby. And they, but they were with the like the stained glass. And they're actually glass pliers. But I couldn't find any that were wide like this that had like the rubber tips on them anywhere else. So, okay. So we've got half of our clasp in. Let's look on the other side. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to pick it up. I think I'm going to leave it on the table. And if you've got a little bit of glue on your on your clasp, you can wipe it off later. Just let it just let it dry really well, and then you can you can um, take it off later. So I'm going to lay this aside. Okay, that one. In fact, I think I'm going to lay it off this table and get it off this table. Give me a second here. I'm going to be carefully pick it up. And you want to leave that alone for probably a good hour. At least sometimes I just let them dry overnight and then I do the second half the next day. Okay, now I did this one this afternoon, so it is good and dry. But this was then the same side that we just did. Okay, on the second purse. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other side in so you can see the whole purse done. Um, and so I did the back, so I did the back of it. Okay, and there was my mark right there, and here's my pocket. And then I'm going to turn it around and we're going to do the same thing on this side. I've got my mark right here. Okay. And this one, the mark, it's a little easier on this side with the little ball there, but you have to kind of keep the mark just to the right of this little clasp part because that's where the clasp, that's where the center is. Okay. So I'm going to slide this in just kind of test fit it so that i know that i've got it hopefully centered we'll just kind of give it a little test fit in there i just really like this clasp this i thought this was cool all right yeah i think that'll I think that looks pretty straight okay so i kind of like to test fit them before i um you know, before I glue, so I know that I'm, I've got it okay. I am going to look at this side to make sure that I don't have any glue. I think I got all, most of the glue off of the, I said there's a little bit on the clasp, so I can take that off with my thumbnail. If it's good and dry, it just comes right off the clasp part, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put this side in. It's a little harder to do the second side because you can't work through the open clasp. So I'm always a little careful when I do this because sometimes I have trouble with the glue on the second side. So, all right, so we're going to do the same thing. We have to have kind of a liberal amount of glue here. So I don't know the best way to hold this to get it in. It's big, isn't it? This one's kind of big. So I'm going to, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I can get my glue going here. But I did this one early this afternoon or maybe late this morning. So it's it's plenty dry. I often don't do them until the next day, though. I'll let them dry overnight and then do them the next day. All right, so I'm going to have to pick this up and see if I can get around the horn here. This is the hardest one because you have to deal with the whole purse. <laughs> I don't mind doing the first half. It's the second half that always gets me. All right. Going around here. But this glue was the best glue I've ever found. I've, I've been wanting to make these things for years and I've always struggled because I can't get the glue to hold. And this Fabric Fusion is the best glue. So I'm worked with, got a little bit too much glue down there. We'll pull some up, there we go. Yeah, this one was a little hard to get the glue in the second half. When I did the first one, I struggled to get it in there. It's just hard to see because it's round and you got a big purse in the middle of you, middle of it, the whole thing. So I don't think I've got enough glue in here. There we go. I think that's good. All right. So got that. So I'm going to pull this up. Try not to get the glue all over the fabric. Looks like I got a little extra here. So we'll wipe a little bit of it off in advance. Okay. Pull this back a little bit. 
And then we're going to mark, line up that mark. Oops, looks like I'm getting, I got a little extra up here. We'll get rid of some of that. I always keep a paper towel near me. And then I'm going to slide this up into the clasp. Try to keep it centered. Get this one up in there. But these round ones really drop. They can just kind of drop right in. The the squarish ones are the hard ones because you got to make the corners, you know, the side corners. And, and so it was so much easier to get this one in. I was really scared to put this in. And it actually just kind of drops in. Okay. Oops, sorry, I got my arm in, arm in the way. Got to have both hands here, though, just a second. Got to get it stuffed up in that corner. There we go. So I think we're about ready then for... Shoot, it's up in there. Feels like it. About ready for the... Whoops. The cording. So I'm going to fold it in half again. And I'm going to just start in the center because normally I've had to start on the outside edges, but this big one, I had to do it in the center. That's the way it worked. And I'm just going to slide it in with my thumb first. I'm just sliding it in to get it started. And then we'll finish it when, it, when we lay it down. Okay, I'm just sliding it in there. Need to cut a little bit off. It was a little too long. Oops. I have to get that out of the purse now. Okay, get that around there. And then go around this side. I'm just pushing it in with my thumb to start. Yeah, I was really scared to put this clasp in because I was like, I, I had the purse done and then I, I waited like two or three days before I put the clasp in. And it's like, I got to get this done. So I finally just got brave and did it. And it really actually went in really easily. So for those of you who have done this, it, was it e okay for you? Some of, some of the gals already had their purses finished. So, okay, so I've got it started. And now I'm going to kind of start with it standing up. It's okay. Actually, I like my other screwdriver. Here it is. This is the bigger one. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the cording in and pushing the, this up into the clasp a little bit more. The, with this purse being stiff like this, we can do this sitting up when I normally have to lay them down. But this works pretty good. I might have to lay it down to finish it. But you can see it better if I leave it standing up. Okay. So I'm working my way around, make sure that cording doesn't show. I want that cording pushed way up into the clasp. Whoop, looks like I got a little extra glue down here. We'll get that out of there. You can usually tell I always get a little extra glue in the, at the ends. Okay, so we've got a big gob come out, and we'll just grab that with the... Let's see what I did on the other side. I think it looks pretty good, though. And if you get a little bit of glue on your clasp, like I said, just let it dry and then it'll flake right off. So that's what I usually do is I don't, I try not to clean it when I'm working on these. Okay, so let's, now we're going to lay this down. I think it looks like it's up in there pretty well. So let's lay this down so we can finish it. Just a second here, get the glue off the end of my screwdriver. We're going to lay this down really carefully like this. And I'm going to take my little screwdriver, here it is, make sure that everything's up in there the way I want it. Looks good. It's a little easier to see where everything is with this purse because it's got a white lining. <laughs> it's not as, not as dark. The other one was really dark, so it was a little hard to see what I was doing. So this one needs to push up a little bit in the center there. There we go. Looking pretty good. That side looks pretty good. And I think this side needs to go in just a little bit. Okay, so I think we're good. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. Pull 
this back a little bit and then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to crimp that inside corner and then I'm going to do two of them so I have two widths of my plier because these are so big okay and I'm going to go over to the side and do the same thing on this side When you'd have the first side in, it's harder to lay it flat. So I have to kind of do this one with my hands and squeeze it with both hands. So I think that looks pretty good. So hopefully I'm going to I'm going to pull this up quickly and see if I don't have make sure I don't have a lot of um, glue on the fabric, which I don't. So I think we'll be good. I'm going to leave this laying down now like this until it dries. OK. So there's the two sides of the clasp bin. And remember, get your get your fabric fusion because this stuff is awesome. And let me grab the purse here so you can actually see the finished purse. So I've got another one that's already finished. All right. So here's that finished purse. This is the, so here's that little, little ball right there that we started with. And here's the pocket down in here. I had some, some paper in here just to make it poofier. Okay, and our, our straps. So here's both sides. And this one, you know, after I got done, I had some, you know, I had a little glue on it. So I just took the my thumbnail and just took the glue off. But isn't that cool? I just thought that was the coolest thing. Now, when you go, when you look down here at the bottom, there is going to be a little gap in here. And that's fine. See, see where there's a little gap? There'll be a little bit of a space, probably a half an inch or so at the bottom of the clasp. And that's okay, because then it opens and closes better. All right, so don't be worried if there's a little gap at the bottom where the where the hinges come together. Okay, like here. See again, you can see that there's a little hole there, and that's fine because it because it opens and shuts better then. Okay. So what do you think? Was that a fun project? I enjoyed this a lot. This was this was, I was a little scared when I first started it because I was you know there was a lot of pieces, a lot of different stabilizer, and I really liked it once I got it going. So here is the finished purse, and I'll have two more done. The one that the first one I did tonight, I'll leave it um, till probably tomorrow, and then I'll put the other half in, and then I'll have two more purses. Okay. So next week we're going to be doing something a little different. Now I I used to have a thing called Dream Club in the store, and we did a lot of work with the design center or IQ designer, if you have a, a baby lock um, in the machine, that's, that's that little digitizing program. Not on, all of you have that on your machines. So what I did is I'm going to show everybody how I made this little wall hanging. So we're going to do this next week. Okay. So I'm going to show everybody how to create this in the machine. And then we will, we will um, stitch it out. Okay. So then we'll then we'll stitch it out, and um, it it's really fun to make it in the machines. And so a lot of people have um, that IQ designer. So if you've had a Dream Machine, Destiny, um, and then the new Luminaires and Solarises have it, and so do the Stellaires, which are the newer some of the newer machines, and the um, like Altair and the Baby Lock. So the, and the Meridian is the other one that has that. So a lot of the machines still have that function and it is really fun. So we're going to learn to do that next week and then stitch out this little wall hanging. And if it's in that little six by six frame, um, I have these up on the website too, these little Ackfeld six by six frames. And then I also put a um, design up on the group on, on um, Dropbox so that you can um, if you don't have that and you can't make the design, you can still watch the class and then you can still get the design because I just put a PES file of the design up there so that you can also all, everybody can sew it because I just thought it'd be cute for the fall. I'm looking forward to fall. <laughs> so can you tell everything I'm doing right now is fall? <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the cooler weather. So that's what we're going to do next week. Okay, so what did you think of StreamYard? Did it work okay, everybody? Did it seem to work okay for everybody? I, I, it seems like it's good for me. 
and then the video can then I can still transfer the videos over to YouTube and I can actually do live broadcasts on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So if I want to do them both live on YouTube and on Facebook, I can do it live on both um, at the channels at the same time. So I thought that was really cool. And then I can also have guests. So like if I want to have Lynn come in and help me with a class, we can both be here from our own homes and have a class. And I would just toggle back and forth between she and I. And um, and then we'd be in one, one, you know, one class all at the same time, like we are on Zoom. So um, I was really excited to find this and I'm and it was very easy to use. So hopefully everything worked okay for you guys tonight. And I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Um, so anyway, so next week we'll we'll do the little wall hanging. And thank you for being um, my first audience on StreamYard. So hopefully this will help our um, classes a lot that we can have extra. Um, I can have extra tools to help you, like with sharing my screen and having multiple cameras. So okay, so I'm going to switch over real quickly and say goodbye. I can switch over to my other camera. Give me a second and I'll switch over to my integrated camera. And I can say goodbye to everybody. So I hope that you enjoyed making the purse. I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait. Make sure you put pictures of your purses up so I can see it. Okay. I'm really anxious to see some of the purses have been beautiful so far. So, okay. So thanks everybody. And we'll see you next week. Have a good week.